What is up, YouTube? It's RS Mario here, bringing you another E3 video. All right, so if you haven't seen Sony's conference by now, you are insane. You have to go watch it. Uh, Sony, man, they they brought it 110% with that one, man. And you know, I, I was wanting to do this video earlier, but Nintendo, with all the freaking Zelda stuff and the Pokemon stuff. You know, they literally sucked up hours of my day, so <laughs> I finally got like a bit of a respite to actually record stuff. I was supposed to record yesterday, but I couldn't because just the hype, man. Like, I was hyped. My, my fan, the fanboy was out. He was on a rampage. I won't, I couldn't, I couldn't record a video like that. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it was awesome. Like, um, I will admit. They probably have beaten Microsoft by a slim margin. The Scorpio really put Microsoft up. Like Microsoft came out with games. They had a very good flow to their conference. They are about an hour. I want to say an hour and a half by hour forty on Microsoft side, but they didn't make it feel that long. At least not you know not until you got to the Minecraft stuff. But um, Micro Sony, they came in. They had an hour and twenty minutes. They knocked out stuff. And it was literally game after game after game after game after game after game. And it was kind of like, oh my god, like I, I have to pee, like, stop with the trailers. Let somebody come out and talk or something, you know. Um, and uh, so they announced a ton of games. A lot of rumored stuff was announced. Actually, rumors and leaks probably hurt this E3 uh, a lot more than previous E3s. But, um, let's see here, I had to take notes. But there were so many games that they announced. Uh, so they announced Resident Evil 7 in VR. Uh, so Resident Evil 7 will work in and out of VR. Uh, Farpoint, which is a VR exclusive game about a man on a hostile alien planet. Uh, Battlefront VR mission. So I'm not sure if this is just a mission in VR or is this a VR component to space battles in Battlefront. More than likely, some of this, some of the more, uh, the bigger AAA things are more likely technical, you know, to just show you what it can do. Uh, specifically, Battlefront VR mission uh, and the Batman Arkham VR stuff. More than likely, that is also going to be some kind of like technical. Uh, same thing with the Final Fantasy 15 stuff. It, they, these things really seem like they're going to be a technical and uh, something that you don't have to buy if you can play on VR. Like, oh, once you get your VR, you can play this. They can show you what actual VR games are going to be like. I think Farpoint, this should be a full-on VR game. Um, oh, by the way, Final Fantasy XV had a way better showing at the Sony conference. It was short, quick, and to the point, and it was less tech uh, issues. <laughs> I really think that the dude, either the dude playing didn't know much about the Xbox controller, or he, his controller was now functioning or something because dude was just getting hip smacked by the Titan. He was supposed to phase through his arm, you know, and, and do all the other stuff. So the Titan was like, bitch, bitch, just smack him, you know. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, Call of Duty, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Damn. <laughs> like I was like, okay, watching that trailer, I was like, okay, and that was one of the things that I needed. I said, I said, you know what? Before I get, before I take a side on this Battlefield versus Call of Duty thing, you know, Titanfall, by the way, screw both y'all. But before I really take a side on this, I need to see gameplay. And I saw both. I saw gameplay of Battlefield. For, I stayed for about 20 minutes. Like, I always stayed for a whole hour to change it. Just battle people. And uh, I stayed for uh, the entire thing of Call of Duty. And I have to say, Call of Duty was fresh. Um, I mean, you know, Battlefield looks fresh too, but this looks fresh for Call of Duty. You know, so I mean, I'm guessing that that trailer was just bad. You know, I felt the people feeling in that trailer, but seeing it in action though. And the, the whole old oh, dude, the, the dude with the scorpion thing and brought you over and killed him and broke his helmet and just body in space and it's, it just seems awesome. And uh, I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I'm a history buff, but I, even I'm not a fan of going back to World War One. 
I mean, yeah, I'm kind of excited to call the video on this one. Um, even though I still don't end up getting Titan Call of Duty, I kind of really want to call the video on this one. Uh, Crash Remakes. So this is something, I made a prediction video for the Sony conference, but I did not have time to edit it. You know, the, I wasn't going to do, I had videos recorded for all the conferences, but I really didn't get a chance to edit them all before E3 started. So, that's really why those didn't come out. And I predicted that we were going to get remakes for Crash. Because a lot of people were saying, oh, a new Crash game? I'm like, no. Because pa um, Pathfinders, um, platformers really don't have that much pull in the industry these days outside of indie games. I mean, some platformers do, you know, I mean, you know, unless you're uh, an Italian plumber with an incredibly awesome name, platformers really aren't that big of a thing. Like, uh, I mean, recent platformers, like AAA platformers, we got like uh, Ratchet and Clank, and that was mainly a tie-in to a movie. So, most of the time, like, you know, platformers really aren't the thing nowadays, and so Sony's spending extra money to license from to buy a license from Activision would not be a cost-effective idea, especially if they wanted to make a platformer. They already have a catalog of platformers. They have um, Knack, they have Ratchet and Clank, they have Jack and Dexter, uh, which would actually probably fit the style of games now being action-oriented too. So having a kind of action-oriented platformer with shooter elements that would kind of work, but they didn't do that. Uh, and also, you know, they have um, Slack Cooper. You know, they have all these things. They could definitely, you know, if they wanted to do something like that, they already own it, but they didn't. So they, they, they know platformers really aren't a big thing. So having a Crash remake would be a lot cheaper and easier than making another full fledged Crash game. Um, not to mention, I read shoot, I would take playing Crash 1 and 2 in a beautiful, like, HD mini game. Like, that's what's up. And of course, if these games really do well, Sony might consider working with Activision to try and get the license. Now that Crash is in Skylanders, there's no hope to get that license back. <laughs> Maybe, you know, Sony can use the license, uh, but I doubt that they'll be able to get the license back for a time. Um, and then, of course, there's Spider-Man, which is a huge rumor before E3. And a lot of people said there's some point in the it. Turns out that it's Insomniac that's doing the game, which isn't bad. Um, so, uh, Insomniac is not owned by Sony anymore. That could be a thing. Maybe maybe that's a part of an Activision deal. Because if I'm not mistaken, Activision still owns the rights to Spider-Man video games. Uh, unless something changed during the Marvel buyout by Disney... Activision still owns those because Activision made the last set of Spider-Man games, which I think was Shattered Dimensions or Shattered Memories or something like that. I know it was on Wii, and it was actually a pretty good one about all the multiple Spider-Mans in different dimensions. I think it was Shattered Dimensions. Uh, so I think Activision actually owns that license. Um, but Insomniac is making a game for PlayStation 4. And uh, of course, Last Guardian. Uh, was there, um, which had a pretty good showing. Quick, sweet, to the point. They probably shouldn't have showed some of the stuff they showed with that was a bit spoilery, but we did get a release date of, uh, I think it's October 16th. Uh, and Days Gone. So Days Gone is like, take like Day Z, no, excuse me, World War Z, the movie, and mix it with like, the Last of Us, a gritty emotional feel, and you've got Days Gone. I mean, because the number of zombies in this game is insane. It's incredible. Um, and of course, the last thing is, you know, of course, the, where the conference began with the epic freaking um, choir, uh, choir, epic uh, chorus, not chorus, what the hell is it called? Orchestra. Epic Orchestra <laughs> uh, number led into uh, God of War. Well, technically God of War 4, but they're just calling it God of War. So I'm guessing this is a reboot. Um, but yeah, God of War is back. 
Kratos is old <laughs> and he is doing all kinds of stuff that probably involves Norse gods. So yeah, Sony, you did damn good. Microsoft, you came close. You came close. I was worried for a minute. I was worried because I was thinking that Sony was going to come out and every time Sony gets in the lead, Sony does get a bit arrogant. They start, you know, they start, they start stroking themselves, all the numbers, the sales, and the VR. Yeah, they start doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> they didn't do it this time. They came out, they said, nope, we're going to stay focused. Games, 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 games. That was it. You did good, Sony. Alright, so, uh, I have about five or six trailers to analyze, and I've got a bunch of Zelda gameplay to come over. So, like, comment, subscribe, and as always, people, 